There's been some questions asked about the hog hunter stock here and what I did to make it better than what it was coming from the factory. As we all know, they're pretty light plastic. The four end flexes, you can take it and twist it. And that's not good for repeatable shots. So I took it and filled this area here. You can see the ribs in the stock. These are the stock ribs. I did not modify them at all. And all I did is I filled these areas with this rockite. Rockite is an expanding cement and that uh, fills that area very well. You see, I also went ahead and drilled the stock for a second uh, sling mounting point. I uh, got some bolts and just taped them up to the diameter I needed them and put them down in here to keep the rockite from filling in the holes. It seemed to work pretty well. And then I put the uh, sling stud back in after I got through with it. Also, uh, the rockite dries a uh, gray color, so I just painted it with some uh, camo green paint to make it match the rest of the stock. <clears throat> now back here at the back, uh, you can see this last rib right here. I didn't go past that with the rockite. <clears throat> but I just, uh, as the rockite is settling in and drying, you just uh, wipe it down a little bit as it starts to harden, and that will take care of any high spots. And I took it down to where the rib is exposed all the way down on both sides, and it doesn't interfere with the, the sides of the, <coughs> of the barrel. Uh, the barrel is still free floated all the way back to this point right here. Now at this point, this is no longer rockite. This is JB Weld. And this is the stuff that uh, works very well for this type of project. Uh, you don't have to have anything special. Um, and I use that to bed the barrel into the stock. You can see here the, uh, the post is still exposed and the barrel uh, made a nice, fitted very nicely into this area right here. The re recoil lug area here, uh, that's JB Weld, was bedded here. <clears throat> you can see, I guess you can see that there. It's a very tight fit, but it's easy to insert and remove, but it does uh, fit very tightly around the recoil lug. I did not tape the recoil lug when I uh, bedded the action. I just made sure it had plenty of release agent on it and uh, that's something that I don't have out here right now but the release agent that I used is is just Johnson's paste wax that you use on floors. It works very well. <coughs> Excuse me. A lot of people will use shoe polish, and that works well too. But if you've got it on hand, uh, Johnson's Paste Wax. I saw some other guys on YouTube that use it also, and it worked very well, well for me. I did not have any trouble with the action sticking anywhere. Uh, also bedded the rear part of the receiver here. You can see the pillar there is exposed. And... You can see the uh, how the action bedded there. Uh, of course, here you, is where the bolt release uh, lever is, so you have to keep this area clear. And that's that's about all that was done to the uh, the front of the stock. Now the rear of the stock, as you can imagine, this rockite is is concrete. It's got some weight to it. So, if, I did, if you didn't do anything to the uh, butt of the stock, it would be very uh, heavy on the front 
of the rifle, you, you lose your balance. Right now, the balance is still right back here at the trigger. So it's a very balanced stock. But what I had to do is you take screwdriver, take off your, your recoil pad, and th this whole area here is hollow. So from the factory, th this just has that little piece of foam down in there, kind of like styrofoam. And I guess it's just to keep it from sounding so hollow. There's really no weight to it at all. So a after I had that removed, I, le I left that piece of styrofoam down in the stock. And then I filled quite a bit of it up with this uh, silicone. Add some weight to it and uh, makes it sound a little sturdier also. Don't know how well you can hear that. But uh, that, that added some balance to it by adding that weight to the back of the stock. You know, it, it's balanced right here at the trigger. If I can get it to balance again, did it well the first time. But, it, you know, it, it does a good job of balancing it out. So now the stock is, is rigid. It will not flex at all by twisting it. And this, this expanding cement is, uh, I don't guess it's quite as brittle as uh, regular concrete so uh, I mean unless you're taking this and beating it on something I don't think you're gonna have any problem with that coming out. The, some of the other things I used was this uh, plastilina. This is a uh, modeling clay that I used for damming up inside the stock when I was uh, using the JB weld to keep the JB weld where it needed to be. This can be bought at most any hobby store. Uh, you can use other types of modeling clay. This is the one that I found. And as you can see, it never hardens. So this should be good. It's workable. You can shape it to fill any of the voids that, where you don't want JB Weld to go. And of course, uh, JB Weld takes uh, four to six hours to set up depending on your temperature where it's workable uh, and you can take the receiver out of the stock while the JB weld is still workable and you can trim it uh, before it gets rock, rock hard. But it seems, seems to have done a pretty good job. It's, it's not perfect. I'm not an expert. Uh, this is the first job, uh, bedding job that I've ever done, but it seems to have done the trick. I learned a lot from uh, a site by the name of Ballistic Studies. I believe they're from Australia or New Zealand. I don't remember which off the top of my head. But they have a very good set of instructions, of vi instructional videos on YouTube. And I would suggest that you uh, watch them. And uh, I haven't used their products, but uh, these are the products that I've used. And just to show you the weight here now, I've got the scale. With everything done, we've got about two and three quarter pound for the entire stock. So it, it's not super heavy. It is uh, noticeably heavier than how it came from the factory, but it's it's still a, a uh, uh, just a medium weight stock, I would say. Hope that answers some of your questions. Again, I'm not an expert, but this is what I've done. Hopefully, uh, you can learn something from it. And uh, I'll put the rascal back together here and, and show you in a little while. Thanks. Okay, we're going to reassemble the Savage 308 Hog Hunter. This is the stock that I have bedded and stiffened. That I described earlier. Going to reassemble it now. <clears throat> Put the uh, spring, everything in here, the little clip that holds it. Box magazine, it snaps into place like that. Okay. Still have the scope mounted on the action. 
this seat put in the uh, trigger guard and the rear screw first get it started just finger tight at first then we'll put in the forward screw get it just seated a little bit and the rear screw on the trigger guard here that's a wood thread screw it doesn't actually hold the action at all just holds rear of the trigger guard now we want to snug up uh, let me change the angle here so you can see what's going on Okay, top screw here, we're going to torque that down to about 15 inch pounds. And then we're going to uh, tap the stock on the bench here, and that will get the receiver to action down against the uh, recoil lug where it's seated then we'll torque the uh, rear action screw to 15 inch pounds and do it again you're not going to hurt anything that just makes sure that it's seated well now I'm going to increase the torque to 25 inch pounds and then retighten the front screw Let's click it three times just to make sure that it's uh, fully fully torqued do the same thing with the rear screw and then we're going to increase the front torque to 30 inch pounds make sure it's torqued properly I'm going to leave the rear one leave it a little bit looser it's not really loose but uh, don't tighten it quite as much because this front one here is the primary one that, that holds the, <coughs> the uh, receiver and the action down against the, uh, the recoil lug in the stock and got it up to 40 inch pounds and we're going to leave it at that okay so now it's back in the stock and then we'll attach the uh, the bipod to the front to the recoil lug I'll show and then I'll show you that the uh, the barrel is fully floated back to this point here okay so here we are I've installed the Harris bipod onto the Savage Hog Hunter I want to show have this uh, label stock it's it's uh, thicker than a regular piece of paper just want to show you that uh, we still have full free floating all the way back to this point here just as I described earlier so got plenty of clearance there's probably uh, a good eighth of an inch clearance all the way around the barrel I'll tilt it here and see if you can see the gap you see it's, it's a pretty healthy gap around the barrel so it is free floated it's not making contact anywhere I like this new uh, Harris bipod this is the model that allows you to tilt uh, instead of having to make little adjustments on the bipod legs themselves you can find level and the bipod is, is, is nice and sturdy so I really like this bipod this is a good set <coughs> good setup for shooting uh, the uh, the butt pad 
on the on the Savage Hog Hunter is plenty soft. It it absorbs the recoil very well. Uh, have no problem at all shooting this 308 for hours at a time. Uh, no no issue at all with uh, the recoil. <clears throat> so anyway, this is my rig. I'm using the uh, primary arms 4x14x44 scope as you can see here uh, nice scope it's, a, it's got the illuminated uh, reticle you can turn it off, on and off it's got an off position in between each brightness level got good uh, markings on the turrets and you can dial for your different distances so this is a uh, it's been a good scope i really like it and uh you ought to check it out but anyway this is my rig uh it's not the most expensive in the world but i find it is more than adequate for uh the distances that i've been shooting so far at this point the longest uh range target i have it's 750 yards and uh, it is uh, very repeatable uh, it, it will probably shoot much better than I can so uh, I think right now I'm the main limitation on my accuracy I found a good load that it likes and uh, very repeatable so thanks for watching uh, questions or comments put them below uh, I'll try to answer them if I can and uh, ready to take it out to the range as soon as the weather cooperates a little bit. Thanks for watching.